Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 24th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Reston, Virginia. The Cisco Talus research team released news regarding a pretty massive botnet. They're calling it VPN filter and say that at least 500,000 hosts are connected to this botnet. Now, Cisco attributes this to a nation state actor due to the sophistication of some of the malware involved. They're also saying that infections are pretty much worldwide, but in particular, recently, in particular, the Ukraine was targeted and infected with new systems. The botnet recruits vulnerable home routers, in particular several Linksys systems, some Microtik routers, as well as Netgear and some QNAP storage devices that are exposed to the internet. Now, one feature that sets this particular malware apart from many other Internet of Things malware is that it actually survives a reboot. Most Internet of Things malware goes away when you reboot the system, not this one. It's a multi-stage malware. The first stage is designed to survive the reboot and then it will download a second and possibly a third stage. The second stage then provides the remote access capability for the actors and the third stage is really more additional modules. One interesting part here, at least one of the modules can be used to then affect industrial control networks. Now, there are a couple of reasons why Cisco came forward and released uh, this blog post now. One reason is a recent sudden increase in infections, and these are these infections that in particular target the Ukraine. A second reason is that the malware actually has the capability to prick the device it's installed on. So it looks like the actor is willing to burn the botnet and destroy infected devices to possibly keep the operation secret, which now, of course, is no longer the case. Now, one problem here is that it's really not easy to figure out if your device is infected. Cisco did publish a number of indicators of compromise. For example, infected devices do reach out to some photo bucket and some other URLs in order to download the second stage. But then again, if your router that connects you to your cable or DSL modem is infected, then it may be difficult to actually collect this data. So out of an abundance of caution, Cisco is recommending that if you own one of the affected devices, that you not only reboot it, but also do a factory reset. Take this opportunity to also make sure that there isn't an update for your firmware available. Now, for your regular internet router, it's usually not such a big deal. Where I see this a little bit more problematic is the QNAP devices that may also be affected. In that case, it may be a little bit more difficult to do the factory reset and then actually recover from it. Now, affected devices suffer from various vulnerabilities, so it's not entirely clear, at least based on the blog post, which vulnerability was used in order to infect these devices. But I guess it's fair to assume that probably a mix of the vulnerabilities was used and whatever the device was vulnerable to was then used to exploit the particular router. And this does look different than some of the earlier attempts to sort of prick in and out of things devices like a famous pricker bot. Pricker bot usually actually didn't break the device, it crashed the device and many devices were recoverable just by rebooting them. In this case, firmware is actually overwritten, which then will cause the device to no longer reboot. And just to emphasize how often these routers are vulnerable, we have a new set of vulnerabilities in D-Link DIR620 routers. These routers are vulnerable to your, well, common set of router vulnerabilities. Hard-coded passwords is one of them, then also OS command injection. Sad news here is that, uh, well, there is no update. This particular model is no longer supported by D-Link, so your only option is to toss it and buy a new one. Better not a D-Link router. And 
Firefox with version 62 will disable the proximity and device light APIs. These are somewhat controversial JavaScript APIs that allow you to detect the light in the room the device is used or if the user is close to the device. There have been a number of proof of concept exploits that showed that these APIs can be used to actually detect what website a user is visiting or even read passwords as the user types them into a keyboard close to these sensors. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.